I'm Jacob McClellan. Sometimes it's easy to forget we sit in the middle of an active seismic zone, but some of the most powerful earthquakes in American history occurred right here in southeast Missouri in 1811 and 1812, when the New Madrid seismic zone rattled the region. Here to discuss how to be prepared for another earthquake is Steve Bessemer. He's the Earthquake Program Manager for the Missouri State Emergency Management Agency. Steve, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, first, Steve, tell us a little bit about the New Madrid Seismic Zone. I mean, is, sh is this something we should still be concerned about? You know, we, we think from the emergency management side that people should be concerned about it. Uh, we don't want to make people necessarily overly concerned, but we are in an area of where the New Madrid Seismic Zone is very close to us here in the, in the Cape Girardeau area. Uh, the zone is actually a series of faults in the earth that are a little over 100 miles long, extend all the way from northeastern Arkansas up into the uh, tip of, of southern Illinois. So it's something that's very close and it's something that has a history of producing earthquakes, some of them very large, and continues to produce earthquakes even today. Well, what's some of the, the latest science tell us uh, about the New Madrid Seismic Zone? There are various studies that come out, uh, you know, the, the U.S. Geological Survey in particular, whenever they, they uh, have their researchers here, uh, certainly we, we take note of, uh, of their findings. And, and uh, you know, one of the latest uh, studies that's come out is indicates that, you know, we are still having earthquakes here. These are not aftershocks. This is not a, a settling in of, the, uh, of this area after the 1811-1812 earthquakes. Aftershocks are quite common after large earthquakes. But according to this study, you know, you, you would not be having those type of things happening 200 years after the fact. So this is new activity, this is current activity, and so this is because there continues to be stresses, there continues to be forces that's going on underneath us that are causing these, these eventual uh, slips in the earth, so to speak, and that are causing the earthquake. So, uh, you know, when you look at reports like that that do come out, uh, you know, we have to look at that and, and consider the fact that you know, the message that we've been trying to tell folks about earthquakes is, is a message that we continue to, to need to tell them. And it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting seismic zone to begin with because it's that intraplate uh, uh, yeah. seismic zone, which scientists still don't really have a good grasp on, on what causes those types, of, uh, those types of earthquakes. Yeah, most of the, most of the earthquakes uh, happen along plate boundaries, uh, different pieces of the crust, basically, which are upon the floating part of the Earth's, Earth's core. And, uh, you know, we generally see those sorts of earthquakes uh, along plate boundaries, uh, along the Pacific coast and over uh, along Japan and down into the Philippines, places like that. You know, other parts were basically kind of pieces of land are fitting together. Here in the center of the country, we don't have that. We don't actually have two sections of crust that are meeting. It appears that maybe, you know, a long time ago, many years ago, that this crust did try to pull apart. We almost ended up with kind of a plate boundary here. But for whatever reason, that, that spreading apart stopped and then these forces are kind of being pushed back together now by other parts of the earth. So this is an area that's really, that uh, scientists say, is under, is, uh, is under pressure from, from constant kind of pushing together different pieces or different sections of land. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the things that folks should keep in mind uh, if an earthquake strikes. What, what's the first thing that, that folks should do? Well, I think number one to remember first is that you don't get any sort of warning prior to an earthquake. It's different. You know, when, when uh, we have severe weather, torn, tornadic type, type activity, you know, oftentimes we, we have an idea it's going to happen even days ahead of time. And certainly when warnings and watches come out, it's hours ahead of time. Uh, hurricanes, you know, days ahead of time, people have some idea that something like that might happen. With earthquakes, it's different. You get absolutely no warning at all. And so you have to know immediately what to do. It's not the time to be going and, and trying to, you know, dig around for supplies or figure out where everybody's at and how you're going to communicate and things like that. So, uh, you know, I think with earthquakes, uh, as opposed to some of the other types of disasters or situations people get into, you know, the, the planning now for something like that is even more important because of the fact, you know, you will not have that time once the earthquake happens. And what are some of those things that folks should do to plan to be able to spring into action immediately when an earthquake hits? Well, number one is if you think you're in an earthquake, you need to get down on the ground. You need to take the, uh, the three-step method, drop, cover, and hold on, drop to the floor, try to take cover under a desk or a table, and then hold on to that until the shaking stops. Uh, we found that that's the best action for people to take. We don't, they shouldn't try to run out of a building. If they're close to a building, they should try to get away from that, but certainly get down as low as possible. Try to find some cover. If you can't find cover, then at least kind of try to make yourself as small as possible, kind of get into a small small ball if you can, protect the back of your head and wait until the shaking stops. 
if it is a very severe earthquake, you're not going to be able to move about very fast anyway. So there's no reason to plan on trying to get out of a building. And then also buildings, you know, we'll have a lot of them around here especially, have bricks on them. Bricks are relatively uh, loose, will come loose, fall down, and can hurt you. So a lot of people do get hurt, and, and a lot of equipment does get destroyed because of things that are falling down inside and just outside of buildings during earthquakes. And then the other things that we talk about as far as preparedness are, are things that you can really do for a lot of other disasters. You know, having a kit in place, having a preparedness kit that has, you know, a first aid kit in it, that has a flashlight with some extra batteries, that has a radio, that has some batteries or that you can crank up and use. Uh, having some canned goods, having some water supply for you and your family. And, and to make sure that you can try to be as self-sufficient as possible for you and whoever is in your household for at least 72 hours. Uh, because you may be on your own, particularly after a large earthquake. You know, if the, the realization is, is that people in this area could be on their own for, for days at a time. And so that's not the time, obviously, after the earthquake, it's not the time to be trying to dig through the house. You might be injured. You, you, you know, that's not the time to be trying to figure out where your supplies are, where your first aid kit. Have them all in one area. Have them in a safe storage area. Make sure other fam members of your family know where they're at. Talk about it ahead of time. You can even make it for kids a family project as far as putting items in, in the kits, you know, making sure there's some toys in there for younger kids, blankets, pillows, and things like that. Now, one of the things about earthquakes is the unpredictability, as you mentioned. We don't know when they're going to strike, and they can occur when parents are at work, kids are at school. What's a good way for family members to be able to get back in touch after that earthquake hits? Having a communications plan is important uh, for a whole family. And, and, you, and that can even be as simple as, as if there's a fire at your home, uh, if people have to get out of the house because there's smoke in the house, where, where do you all meet? You can't just say, well, we're going to meet out on the front steps because, well, if you have a big fire, you have to get farther away from the building. So it's important even for something like that to say, we're going to meet at the mailbox next door, we're going to meet at the stop sign up on the corner, something like that. So. There are these things that people can take advantage of uh, now and, and thinking about who to contact not only locally but out of state so that you can reconnect after the disaster. Now as far as most of the, most of the buildings in this area, are most of these um, built to norms that could withstand, uh, that could withstand a powerful earthquake? Uh, any building that's really more than 50 years old probably was not built with any sort of seismic design considerations. Uh, brick buildings are very good uh, for for fires, they're, you know, they're, they're not going to burn up. Uh, for wind, they can handle high winds uh, pretty well most of the time. But they don't, they don't handle very, uh, earthquakes very well. Uh, just the, the shifting back and forth of the ground horizontally, uh, brick buildings don't do very well. So uh, you're, you're safer if you're in a more flexible type of building, such as wood, uh, such as some of the, 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 uh, uh, the metal type buildings that are constructed now. You're going to be safer if you're in a one-story structure as opposed to a five-story or 10-story, 15-story structure. But, uh, but, e but there are ways to strengthen those buildings, and, they're certain, and they can be quite costly. So sometimes you just have to look at saying, well, I can't go out and build a new building necessarily right now, but are there some things I can do as far as securing light fixtures and bookcases and stuff like that? Uh, because those are the things that are probably going to come down uh, first of all during an earthquake, and those are the ones that uh, you know could certainly hurt you just as well. And hot water heaters—that's a—that's a really big one. Yeah, cause that could be your water supply. If you're at home and your hot water heater—you know—the power goes out and you're not in a situation where uh, you can get water out of your tap, uh, you've got that hot 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 water heater that has uh, all those gallons of water in it, and you can tap into that and, and you possibly use that for a water supply. And also, if it does tip over. Uh, and they are prone to tip over in, in earthquakes if they're not strapped to the wall, strapped to the foundation. Uh, it possibly can pull away a gas line, and so you could end up with a fire situation there as well. Tell us a little bit about the, um, about the, 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 the Great Shakeout. The Great Central U.S. Shakeout, we have had about uh, four years now in the state of Missouri, and it's been uh, several different months of the year, but it's, a, it's basically our statewide earthquake drill. We have drills for other types of events during the year, uh, and our next uh, uh, Great Central U.S. Shakeout will be uh, October 16th. And we'll be participating, we'll be one of them, probably about 40 some states and territories uh, really across the globe that'll be doing an earthquake drill on the same day. And so it, it's simple, it, it can take a minute out of your time just to practice, practice that drop, cover, and hold on drill. We've got great participation by schools across the state of Missouri. Uh, we don't have every one of them signed up, but we're going to work on it. We're going get, to get all of them in there. And of course the universities, we want them to participate. If uh, colleges want to have a kind of a, a safety related event, you get everybody to sign up online. 
Uh, it increases our numbers. We want to have as many people as possible signed up so that, uh, so that you can go to the, to the website, the Great Central U.S. Shakeout website, and, and see what other organizations or groups or schools are participating in the drill. So it can take as simple as, as easy as a minute to do, mm -hmm. just a simple drill, or if folks want to do more uh, you know, other types of preparedness things, such as, you know, hey, let's practice evacuating a building or stuff like that, you can add that on there, too, and, and on the Great Center U.S. Shakeout website. It's got all that information on how to do it. We've been talking today with Steve Bessemer. He's the Missouri State Management Agency's Earthquake Program Manager. Thank you so much for coming out and talking. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more in just a moment on Cape Chronicle. hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology.